Hello and welcome to the Enduro World Series show, a brand new show that will be bringing you the inside line on the very best mountain bike racing following every round of the EWS this year. We're here in the beautiful Tweed Valley of Scotland today where the 2022 EWS season has just kicked off in fine fettle. On the show today we'll have all the updates from the pro men's, the pro women's and EWS e-racing from this weekend and we've drafted an EWS legend Josh Carlson and sent him out on course for the race. On top of all this we'll be catching up with Martin Mayes to see how he's feeling ahead of the new season on a brand new team for the first time in his career. But before we jump head first into the new season of thrilling bike racing, let's take a quick look at what Enduro World Series racing is all about and how it all works. The Enduro World Series is the ultimate test for any mountain biker. Eight rounds are raced all across the globe. Each round or race is made up of multiple time stages, including a pro stage and a designated queen stage. These stages are raced over two days. The pro stage on Saturday and the remaining stages take place on Sunday. And only one practice run is allowed for every stage. Winning an EWS race requires the fastest overall time across these stages. However, this is not all there is to an EWS. You have to get there first. The liaisons between stages aren't timed, but a rider being late for their start time will receive a time penalty. Mechanicals and crashes are to be expected, and the fastest but also the most consistent racers will be the ones rewarded in this series. Points are awarded at the end of each race from 1st to 115th position in the men's race, and 1st to the 25th in the women's. The fastest riders on the pro and queen stages are awarded additional bonus points that will contribute towards the all-important overall championship. The winner of the Enduro World Series will be the rider who can not only survive all this, but do it the fastest. EWS racing truly is the best overall test of a mountain biker. The riders will be tested on all their skill sets before we get to the end of the season. We're here at the EWS Tweed Valley and we're ready to get the season kicked off for the year. It's been a long break and there's plenty of fans here today raring to see the racers come through. This year we have even more action than ever for you to enjoy. Let's take a look at what we have to look forward to this season in the Enduro World Series. This season we pick up right where we left off last time out in the Tweed Valley of Scotland before heading on a whistle stop tour of some of the best riding locations in the world. Yeah! Pets and Jamnitsa in Austria and Slovenia Val de Fassa in Italy, Whistler in Canada, Burke and Sugarloaf in the USA, Prom Montana in Switzerland, and our season finale in Ludenville in France. And at the end of the year, the season moves to Finale Ligurie for the 10th year in a row for our all important Trophy of Nations race. Anything could happen this year in a sport as unpredictable as enduro and it's all to play for as we start again afresh in 2022. Let's take a look at some of the top riders likely to be at the sharp end this season. Jack Moyer, the Aussie ripper from Down Under took the overall win in 2021 after an almighty battle with Richie Rood and will be back to defend that title in 2022. After a shoulder operation in the off season to fix the injury that was bothering him towards the end of last season, it'll be interesting to see how he begins his title defence. Smooth and fast, the Australian has lit up the EWS since his transition from downhill racing in 2020. Richie Rood is a proven champion with two overall titles to his name in 2015 and 2016. He will be hungry for revenge after an unfortunate disqualification took him out of contention right at the very end of 2021. A powerful machine of a rider, he is unmistakable as he muscles his bike down the trails. Jesse Melamed. Jesse had an incredibly consistent season last year on the podium four times and third on the overall results. But with no wins to his name in 2021, the Canadian rider will be looking looking to get back on the top step for the first time since 2020. Martin Mays, one of the most talented riders in mountain biking at the moment. 
just as comfortable at the top of the rankings of the World Cup downhill as he is at the Enduro World Series. After a slow start in 2021, missing a couple of rounds for the birth of his first child, he finished strong with a win in Tweed Valley. He has a new team as well in 2022, moving to the Orbea Fox Enduro squad, which could see him revitalised, challenging those top two again. Behind these four, we have a strong field of pro men looking to break their way into the top rankings. And to name just a few, keep your eyes on Charlie Murray from New Zealand, Adrian Day and Kevin McKell from France, all riders we saw on the podium in 2021. And you can never write off mountain bike legend Sam Hill from Australia. Could this be the year that we see him claim a record fourth crown? Over to the women's field now, where the racing really has been hotting up over the last couple of years. As we break into an exciting new, ultra-competitive age, picking a winner from this stacked field can be a treacherous task. Melanie Poujan, last season's overall winner from France, is something of an enigma. Quiet and soft-spoken person off the bike, she is all action when on it. Melanie is becoming known as one of the most dynamic riders in the EWS. In 2021, she rode a clever and consistent series to take the overall title, and we fully expect to see the same of her again in 2022. Isabel Cordurier. In recent years, she has been the queen of the Enduro World Series with a perfect season in 2019, winning every single race. After a disrupted 2020 and 2021, could we see Isabel back dominating the series this year? However it plays out, the champion of France is never too far from the top step. Harriet Harndon. Hailing from a hotbed of talent, the small town of Malvern in the UK, which is also home to MTB and EWS legend Tracy Mosley and current XC World Champion Evie Richards. Paddy Harndon burst onto the EWS scene in 2021, having previously competed as an elite XC and cyclocross racer. Two wins in 2021 will have left her with the belief that she can win more and more. Morgan Shar ran a close second behind Melanie Poujan in 2021 and we'll be hoping she can be the one to topple her this year. Another top rider hailing from France and has now taken two EWS wins in the spiritual home of the series, Finale Ligari. Other riders to watch this weekend are a couple of locals. Bex Barona took her first win here at the end of last season. She will be fueled by the belief that she can do it all over again this weekend. We also have Jess Stone Racing who almost pulled off an upset for the ages last time out when we were here. If she is riding how she was last season, the rest of the field will have to be on top of their game. There we go then, we can't wait to get into it. The riders have been here in the Tweed Valley for a couple of days now checking out the course and shaking off any cobwebs before we kick the new season off. We sent Josh Carlson out with the pros on practice day to take a look at the key sections and also catch up with the top riders and see how they are feeling heading into this one. Josh is one of the original EWS racers who raced during our very first year in 2013. Now racing for the Giant Factory off-road team in the EWS E category. He has years of experience and knowledge to bring you. Let's see who and what he found out there. G'day Trendsetters, Josh Carlton here from the Giant Factory off-road team. We're up here in the Scottish Highlands for round one of the Enduro World Series. We're up here at the start of practice. As you can see, the riders behind us are getting ready. We're going to head down on course and dissect a couple of areas, check out some key components to this race, see how the riders are tackling these tight and technical conditions. Richie Rude, welcome back, mate. How was stage two? Oh, good time. Yeah, first stage of the year of practice. It's been a long while since we've been here, so it just feels good to finally be practicing, you know. Happy days. Looks like a pretty wild finish there. Are you? Uh, what's your plan in this like twisty, open, clear cut? There's plenty of lines. What's uh, What's the hot tip? Yeah, it's like a little straightforward, but you can definitely kind of miss time, like the little corners, and gain too much speed. So you kind of just gotta like keep the eyes up and and pump the right things, and not just hit a f you know half a stump somewhere. Zach, we're uh, looking at different lines here on stage three. What are you looking at? Uh, like you said, I just reckon that last corner is pretty important to like carry the speed because it's pretty flat afterwards. So I'm just trying to figure out if I want to go wide there, cut across to like get a little bit, get a better entrance to the corner, or if you could actually do the same with like going main line and pop up. Full tilt from top to bottom. Good work, mate. Good luck out there. Thank you very much. We're deep into the valley here, and this is exactly what the Tweed Valley is known for. 
Now this thing here, if you had big bars, as you can see, some chunks are already taken out of this tree. That's just going to get bigger. And as you turn, in a lot of these corners throughout every stage, there's big tree roots, there's slippery rocks, there's mud that's been dragged across it. These niggly little sections and limiting your mistakes is a big key to this race come Saturday and Sunday. You're the defending champ from last year's race coming into this year's race. You've got a brand new setup on the Yeti program here. How's that feel? You feeling good about coming into this year with a brand new setup and defending champ, dry conditions, home race? How does that feel? Oh my gosh, lay it all on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. The the bike has been like, uh, obviously anyone swapping teams, you kind of a bit worried if anything might be like not feel good, but everything's felt mint like from the off. So yeah. I've, not, I've not been scratching my head at all, which is great. So I could just, all winter just been cracking on, like getting used to the trails on this bike. And yeah, it's only been positive. So really pleased. Okay guys, we're up here now on the pro stage and stage six. So this will be the first stage that riders tackle on Saturday afternoon. It's a standalone stage on Saturday afternoon. And then they'll repeat this stage on Sunday afternoon for stage six. It's the pro stage. There's extra points available. That'll be very, very important when that overall series points comes down to the wire at the end of the year. We've seen very tight point battles over the last couple of years, so every point you can gather throughout the season is crucially important. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. It's been a massive day of practice for the very first round of the 2022 Enduro World Series here in Inalith in Scotland. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about the track, the riders, the setups, uh, how they're gonna tackle this tight and twisty and technical course and all the other T objectives we can think of. Thanks for tuning in to Carlson On Course and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Josh. There you go. Great insights from the big man himself. Six and a half foot of ginger enthusiasm. And that is only a fraction of what the riders will need to tackle this weekend. If you want to see more of what Josh got up to out there, head over to the Enduro World Series YouTube channel. But it is now time to get into the important part of the weekend and see how the racing went down for the EWS Pro Men and Pro Women. Who will come home with the win at the first round of 2022? After eight months of waiting, it was finally time for the first round of the Enduro World Series at the EWS Tweed Valley. But with blue skies and sunshine, Southern Scotland suddenly felt like a much faster place to be. 42 and a half kilometres of racing awaited the amassed pro ranks on Sunday across 1,800 vertical metres of climbing and five stages. Racing had already kicked off with Saturday evening's pro stage. It was a stage which had decided last year's championship and seemed determined to serve up some more drama this year. In the pro women's race, Isabel Cordurier looked ominously fast. The French national champ took the win and the points by a slender margin from Scotland's Ella Connolly. The reigning champ, Melanie Poujan, was down in 11th, 10 and a half seconds off the pace. Another champion in trouble was Jack Moyer. The big Aussie crossed the line in 38, but the headline news from the pro men's field was that it would be the local ripper, Innes Graham, who would clock the fastest time and who would then start Sunday last to drop. Jesse Melamed was second and Sam Dale was third. The stages were waiting. It was time to go racing once again in the Tweed Valley. Cannondale's Connolly was clearly in no mood for hanging around. Ella won on the first stage of Sunday. Last year's winner Bex Barona aboard her new Yeti was on the move too. Second on the stage and into second in the overall. Barona's teammate Casper Willey had a huge crash on the opener, which forced at first a course hold on the stage and then a red flag. The stage was cancelled. The pro men's race was now a five stage affair. In the pro men's race, Yeti's Richie Rood fought his way into third place with Innes Graham in second and Jesse Melamed taking the stage win. The Queen stage awaited. Points lay at the finish for those willing to risk claiming a victory on the toughest test of the weekend. The juggernaut was now getting up to speed. Richie won again on Big Ball. Bex Barona was into the lead of her home race. Just like in 21, the inner leaving in local was coming on strong right at the perfect moment. She was stretching her lead, but it was still only three tenths of a second. 
A Scot racing in Scotland, Ella Connolly won the fifth stage of the day. That put her into control of the race for the first time. Was a debut victory now on the cards. Jesse Melamed went fast here in the wet eight months ago. In the dry, he was pushing his riding to the next level. He won stage five, but Rude, the race leader, was right behind him. One stage remain. Did the Tweed Valley have one last twist to serve up? Isabel Corderier rode consistently all weekend and was rewarded with a trouble-free, confidence-building run to the podium in third. Bex Barona needed a big performance to make it two from two in Scotland, but it just wasn't meant to be. Bex would leave round one happy with a second spot and plenty of points. With her first ever EWS win hanging in the balance, you could have forgiven Ella Connolly for letting the pressure get to her. But she smashed her way to first place on the final stage to take her first ever EWS victory on home soil and Cannondale's first since 2014. Ella Connolly, your first ever EWS win. Can you believe it yet? Has it sunk in? No, I'm still in absolute shock. I don't, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, I haven't looked at the times all day. I've heard like murmurs of other people and like, other people speaking and everyone's saying like great job but, like a bit more enthusiastic than usual so like I don't know I thought it might be quite good but yeah I didn't expect this. In the men's race all eyes turned to Ennis Graham. The young local had held his own all day long and was closing in on his maiden EWS podium. Jesse Melamed was fourth on the stage but had done enough to earn a hard fought second in the overall. But there was little doubting the sense of redemption felt by Richie Rood as he crossed the line to open his win account for the season. First win of 2022. How was that one for you? Bit of redemption up there? Yeah, definitely. Like last year, I was so keen to race these, all these tracks and kind of all I wanted to do last year. And um, yeah, it was a great time out here. Just like dry tracks, tight trees. So you're just like, you're just so focused. And yeah, it was pretty wild. The overall standings then pretty much mirror that of the opening race of the year. Connolly and Rude will have the yellow plates when we head to round two. And yet a take to the top of the team's championship and the top step of the podium. There we have it then. The crowd are dispersing behind me, but what a story they've got to tell when they get home. Ella Connolly with her debut EWS win proof that if it were needed the pro women's field is more competitive than ever before and what about the pro men's race redemption for Richie Rood in the valley off the tweed after last year's bitter disappointment the big man stuck it on top of the podium winning the first round of the series is a great statement of intent to your rivals but how does winning the first race work in your favor statistically Neil Donahue has dusted off his readers and dug far back into the archives of history here to answer this very question. It's time for our very first EWS Stat Attack. Let's take a look at the stats and facts from the previous opening rounds of the Endurable Series to see what chance the first winners have of going on to take the overall championship title at the end of the season. Oh. Fabian Burrell came into the first ever EWS race in 2013 as a double World Downhill Champion. And so, in the unknowns of the newly formed Enduro Series, he was already a favourite, as was Tracy Mosley. In the women's race, as she too was a former Downhill World Champion. Both took the first ever EWS wins up for grabs and Tracy went on to take the overall. However, it was Jerome Clements, the second place rider in Punterala, who would take the men's 2013 overall title. In 2014, we went to Chile for the first round and Jerome Clements came out swinging, but it was not the opening round winner that got the title that year. All round talented cyclist, Ozzy Jarrah Graves came on strong and took that overall. Talking of legends, 13 time mountain bike world champion and Caroline Chausson won the opening round, but at the end of the year, it was again Tracy Mosley that had the most consistent season and backed up her year one overall title. 2015 opened with the familiar names at the top of the board in Rotorua, but it was a new name in the men's overall race as Richie Rood came of age. The former junior downhill world champion made the full-time switch to enduro racing and took top honours. Timo back again, three times overall champion, back to back, and then she announced her retirement. Now 2016 is an interesting one. The season opened again in the Southern Hemisphere, Coral Chile, and both the male and female first round winners did go on to take the title with super strong seasons. Richie Rude and Cecile Ravenel. 
2017 kicked off in New Zealand and the locals were frothing, I think that's what they'd say. Wind Masters took the win, but it was fellow Antipodean Sam Hill who roared through the season and took his first overall, while the Cecile Ravenel show went on strong in the women's overall. 2018, a theme was developing, opening rounds won by Sam Hill and Cecile Ravenel, overall titles, Hill and Ravenel. 2019 had some fresh names at the top of the table at round one. Keegan Wright won his first and only EWS in Rotorua. Isabeau Cordure won Rotorua by only 11 seconds, actually very close, considering she went on to win every single round that year. In 2020, there was no overall. Something big happened. I can't quite remember what was going on, but there wasn't much racing. 2021 saw the battle royale that we've talked about an awful lot between Richie Rude and Jack Moyer. US versus Australia. Rude took first blood, but the war went to Moyer. Isabeau Cordurier took the first win, but would finish third overall, as Melanie Pujan had the best year of all the women. So there you have it. Seven of the 16 first round winners have gone on to win the overall title that year. That's a pretty good rate, 43%. We shall see, can the winners of Tweed Valley back up the result at the end of the year? Thank you, Don, there. Very thorough indeed. Some of those early EWS clips have me cringing somewhat, but, well, we live and learn. Earlier in the week, we caught up with one of the top riders in the EWS this year, Martin Mays. With a brand new team for this year, he will be hoping to be up there challenging for that overall title. Martin is a rider who seems like he's been around forever, but at the grand old age of 25, there's plenty of racing to come from the talented big Belgian. I'm Martin Mace, I ride for BA Factory Racing uh, and I'm 25 years old. Uh, I first got into bike racing um, from my dad. I think I've got the virus from my dad. He was a racer as well. The older I got, the more I was thinking, oh, this is what I want to do. My 10 seasons, I feel like. I spent a lot of time now racing all over the world, getting also a lot of experience uh, from all the past few years, so it's, uh, it's a good feeling. So yeah, the 2021 season was a little bit different than uh, the other years, the other seasons. I became a dad uh, at the beginning of the season, which was the reason why uh, I didn't come to the first and second round of the EWS last year. Becoming a dad, it's just so much joy and uh, also you learn a lot and you see things uh, differently. That's also part of the reason why I'm so motivated uh, for this uh, coming season in 2022 and because now, now I have the chance to you know, race the full series and fight for a championship, which is uh, you know, a big goal of mine. The little family at home and you, you are able to switch off uh, much easier from all the biking, all the pressure uh, that you can have through, you know, the training, but also the approach of the race. Yeah, so I've spent uh, nine years dreaming with GT. I felt like after nine years, it was maybe time for me for a new motivation, um, uh, maybe a little change. Uh, but also riding a new bike, um, the new Obea is, is just really a bike that seems to suit me. I think my favorite things about racing in the BS is just spending a lot of time on the bike. It's one of the biggest difference between downhill racing and enduro racing. Enduro racing, you've got to spend a lot of time practicing stages, but also racing. Spend four or five hours on the bike. For someone that loves biking, love racing uh, like me is very satisfying you race all over the world different terrain different condition all year long and at the end of the championship you know whoever wins is the best rider in the world what if anything is your least favorite thing about riding the heat of us i think <laughs> my least favorite things is probably when you have a day at the office <laughs> and it's raining and you keep crashing and you're not feeling 100% uh, yourself on the bike or you know maybe you get mechanicals uh, obviously it's part of the game but it never feels you know amazing 
But once again, I think at the end of the day, it's only bike racing. You know, it's obviously our job. It's quite important. You need to do it the best possible, but it's all about having fun and going fast on your bike. Don't think or get distracted about anything else. Just focus on yourself and most likely you will have a good day. I have many big goals for this coming season. I think priority is to have fun, feel good on the bike, perform uh, all the races. At the end of the year, if I manage to get all those things together, I will be aiming to, yeah, hopefully have a chance for a championship uh, this coming 2022 season. Great to have Martin back for the full season this year, and we wish him the best of luck for the rest of it. He will certainly be one to keep an eye on on that new setup. Here at the Enduro World Series, we do not only have the main EWS race, but since 2020, we have been developing the exciting new e bike series, the EWS E. E bikes have allowed us to cram even more racing than ever and to test both the riders and the bikes to the very limits. With an all-new format to the regular EWS and tight, tough racing, it is fast becoming a race not to miss. EWS E is more than just an EMTB category at the EWS. It is an entirely new genre of bike racing. The additional range of an e-bike means we can race even further on even more stages, both up and downhill. First introduced in 2020, an EWS E race consists of between 8 and 14 stages, including one or two technical climbing stages called the power stages. Like an EWS race, the rider with the fastest time across all the stages combined wins the round. Unlike an EWS race, the course is split into three loops with two to five stages in each loop. With about a thousand meters of climbing in each loop, battery management plays a key role for all the racers. Liaisons between stages aren't timed, but a rider being late for their start time will receive a time penalty. Riders have 30 minutes between completing each loop and starting the next to change or charge a battery, fix any mechanicals, or simply to recover. Nico Vuyo. You can't mention the word enduro without the legend that is Nico Vuyo springing to mind. And the same is true of EWSE. With the Frenchman winning all but one of the races in the sport's history so far, he is definitely one to watch. Mekhana. Fans of Mekhana will be pleased to see him back between the tape after his retirement from downhill at the end of last year. With a change in team to Yeti Shimano EP and strong showings in the early days of the EWS, it will be interesting to see how the big Australian tackles this new format. Yannick Pontal. Winner of the inaugural EWSE at Zermatt 2020, Yannick Pontal has been pipped to the post by a certain compatriot ever since. Nevertheless, he's not been far off the pace at each round, and a DNF here in the Tweed Valley last year will have left him hungry for a result. Tracy Mosley, another Tweed Valley incumbent and a rider that could also be found on or near the top step in the early days of Enduro. Tracy has repeated the success on her e-bike with a win and two silvers in 2021. She'll be wanting to keep that colour scheme nice and cohesive in her trophy cabinet this year. Laura Charles, with two first place finishes at Finale Ligari in Crom Montana, slightly marred by a second place finish in the Tweed Valley last year, this weekend is an opportunity for Laura Charles to complete that gold medal set, even if it is eight months later. The French rider has raced XC in the past, so no doubt she'll be keen to get her teeth in Lepar stages. Michaela Parton, another downhill rider swapping the triple clamps for a motor this weekend is Fort William local Michaela Parton. A regular on the podium at the Scottish downhill races and putting in some strong results on the World Cup circuit despite having only been riding for five years, the young Scot will be looking to bring her downhill skills and local knowledge to the stages this weekend. One of the most vital parts of the EWSE is the power stage, an uphill stage that takes place over steep and technical terrain. Since its induction in 2020, our riders have been working out the best way to tackle this unique challenge. 
we caught up with a few of our riders whilst they were out practicing the other day to get some tips on how best to tackle a task. The EWSE Power Stage is a completely unique challenge not seen anywhere else in mountain bike racing. A technical and demanding uphill stage, our riders are tested not only on their technical ability but the power in both their legs and their bikes. Steep and technical, one mistake here can have drastic consequences for your race and see riders shedding time or even pushing their e-bikes up a hill. What does it take to be a success in this unique test? Oh man, it's only short, it's only a short distance and a short time, but you can make and break your whole race, you know, doing this one. You mess up a technical little section like this and you wheel spin or you get off your bike or, you know, you just, it's not very high speed. To keep calm, to never start to pedal and be focused on the line and don't push too much because you make some mistakes for sure. So you really need to be focused, try to do your best, save a bit uh, of battery before to, to try to have the maximum power during, uh, during the stage. You want to you wanna have a good cadence. If you get too low in your cadence, you know, you'll get bogged down. But if you have a nice high cadence, drop your seat down a little bit, drag a bit of brake so your wheels don't spin too much. It's quite slippery here, so kind of acts like a bit of a bit of a traction control and just ride you know treat it like a downhill run <laughs> but uphill look at the lines practice enjoy it have a bit of fun you can get up some pretty wildly steep stuff when you're out on a, a casual trail ride they're hard yeah because you're, you're you're pedaling the cadence is high the stress the adrenaline i think is probably that makes your heart rate high as well so you're definitely breathing hard by the time you get to the top most of the time we reduce the tire pressure you know to try to get some grip a bit more grip with a softer tires and choice soft compound at the rear uh, for sure because it's super important and choose the good line and don't push too much because otherwise you lose your balance and you slide The EWSE has quickly become a staple of our weekend here at the Enduro World Series and this year we have even more rounds than ever, five including its very own and standalone in Valberg in July. Make sure you keep your eyes on this blossoming sport. We had an absolute nail biter here in the Tweed Valley so let's get into it and see who took the top honours in our EWSE races this weekend. The first EWSE of 2022 picked up right where the series left off in 21 with the EWSE Tweed Valley. 65 gruelling kilometres of racing lay ahead across 13 stages split into three loops, peppered with a pair of power stages on stages 4 and 12. Edgar Carballo Gonzalez took the win on the first stage of the year. The form book was more familiar in the pro women's race, with Laura Charles edging out Scotswoman Michaela Parton. Charles dominated the first loop whilst behind her former EWS champ Tracy Mosley was battling with Aaliyah Marcellini for second. Mick Hanna making his EWS E debut wasn't taking long to warm up to it and took Yeti Shimano EP's first stage win on the third test. Paul Aisley Johnson was only 0.2 behind though and was now heading for the lead of the race. Charles made a clean sweep on the stages of loop one. She and French motocross star Levi Batista won the opening par stage of the year. As they headed for the first tech zone of 2022, Charles and Johnson had control of the race. Good apparently, so loop one's finished. Sam was sitting in first, which I didn't expect. Uh, I had a clean morning, like, wasn't riding as well as I hoped it would, just a bit, little bit, a little bit tight and not flowing as well, but clean, so on to the next two. Mm, loop one was good for me, it was more dry than yesterday. The track are super cool to ride, super tight, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here and I just want to enjoy my race and yeah. Mm. Johnson came out of the first break swinging and took the win on stage six, but loop two wasn't going to go all his way. Caballo Gonzalez punched back on six and seven, whilst Antoine Rouget won on eight. Hey, 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 
By the time they headed for the second tech zone, Johnson had slipped into third. Caballo Gonzalez was in control, and Yannick Pontal was up into second. Yeah, go, Yannick, go, go, go! In the pro women's race, it was a familiar battle out front. Tracy Mosley had ridden her way into the race and was duking it out with Laura Charles out front, but it was Alia Marcellini who was sitting in second by the end of the loop. The third loop would decide the race. Edgar Carballo Gonzalez was cracking on with the task in hand. A trio of stage wins in a row put him firmly in control of the race. Levi Batista made it a sweep of the power stages with a win on the second of the day. Laura Charles was also in the mood to consolidate her lead. Three stage wins went her way, while Sophia Wiedenrot won the power stage. Tracy Mosley pipped Laura Charles on the final stage, but it was too little too late. The Miranda Factory racing rider took her first win of 2022 in formidable style. A uh, big result in a new team as well, that must be good. Yes, I'm super happy for my new team because they trusted me, so yeah, all good. Tough course today though. Yes, it was super long race and uh, the time was super tight, so yeah. Mosley was in second, but one of the rides of the day went to Alia Marcellini. Hamstrung by a smaller 500 watt battery, the Italian pushed through the pain barrier to get herself into third place. In the pro men's, it was all Edgar. The Orbea rider hammered home a dominant performance by taking a win on the final stage. You're happy with today? Yeah, a lot. I, don't be I can't believe it. <laughs> Were you watching the times all day or did you just ride flat out? No, nothing, I, I know now. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> Well done, congratulations. Thanks, bro. The Italian Andrea Garibo had been riding consistently in the top 10 all day and now, with a final superb effort on the last par stage, he found himself on the podium. Lee Johnson kept the pressure on and was rewarded with a well-deserved third place in the overall. And here are the results then. Laura Charles made it 2-4-2 in the Tweed Valley. Mosley in second, and then the breakthrough ride from Marcellini in third. Edgar Carballo Gonzalez takes his debut EWSE victory ahead of Andrea Garibo, and the Pride of Wales Lee Johnson in third. In the team's championship, Miranda Factory Racing take to the top step and start their season off with a bang. And it's probably unsurprising to see that the overall championships mirror those race results. Carballo Gonzalez and Charles lead the way. And that's it from us here at the EWS Tweed Valley. Congratulations to our winners this weekend. We will see you next time on the 21st of June from Austria Slovenia for the EWS Petsen Jamnitsa, a race we were excited to be back at for the first time since 2018. We'll have more insider info for you as well as even more exciting racing. In the meantime, keep your eyes on our Enduro World Series YouTube channel where we will be bringing you even more updates than ever this year. See you then and thanks for watching.